your Saturday with us, Saturday morning, afternoon, wherever you might be. Yeah. Um, so my name is Nicole Coyne. This is Ashley. Ashley, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Ashley Osterman. I'm a dietitian and I work with Nicole. Um, I'm the director of nutrition education at Healthy Steps Nutrition and HSF Mentoring. I really work hard to make sure that we are educating everyone on nutrition and making the education as simple as possible, right? Something as fundamental as nutrition and fitness shouldn't be complicated. And today we're going to give you guys three simple steps to making nutrition simple. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for you guys so that you can see our presentation here. And then if you guys haven't already, make sure that you um, download the workbook that we sent out in the email to go along with this presentation. There's some really great information on there for you, as well as some places for you to take some notes that you're going to learn about today in the presentation. Awesome. So today we are talking about Nutrition Made Simple, three steps for success. And before we get started, I just want you guys to know a little bit about Healthy Steps Nutrition. Um, so we really focus on a habit-based approach and we started as a nutrition company, ended up opening up a CrossFit gym. And in that process, CrossFit found out what we were doing and uh, we started helping a lot of other CrossFit gyms around the world. I've written for the CrossFit Journal and do presentations, a lot of support to help gyms add nutrition as a core service in their business and help their clients because we know that you are coming to us overwhelmed or you're probably overwhelmed right now because there's so many different diets out there and you have no idea which one is best for you and the truth is you really need accountability and support um, you can read everything you want to see results but it's all about the action that you take and you know, I, I talk to people all the time about nutrition challenges and we're actually running a nutrition challenge at the end of the month. And, you know, people see great results during a challenge, but a lot of times you end up taking a few steps back after the challenge is over because you don't have that accountability and support. And our focus is really on the individual coaching and accountability support long after a nutrition challenge to help people see really amazing results. So we really focus on two big pieces at Healthy Steps Nutrition, but we, the majority of our focus is on, the, on piece number one. Uh, we want people to eat real food. We want you to shop the perimeter of the grocery store, or if you don't want to go to the grocery store, go to the place that Ashley went and get a box of vegetables and have some lean meats and have some starch. We don't have to have all these shakes and food products to lose weight and stay healthy. You can actually eat real food. And if you're doing that consistently and having a treat once in a while, that's totally okay. It's um, really all about balance. You know, the reason why I started Healthy Steps Nutrition was my mom was diagnosed with cancer when I was really young and we completely changed our diet and our, and our lifestyle. And I knew nutrition was important, but I didn't know that it was actually a field until we, until I went to college and was cheering in college and a lot of us had eating disorders and they sent us all to a dietitian and I left that office and said this is exactly what I want to do and here we are helping thousands and thousands of people around the world uh, with nutrition which is absolutely amazing but we have this fitness component too which is really important you know when you combine both of those things together uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are a, maybe a little bit more active than you were before just because we have nothing else to do I know uh, we're taking our kids on a walk every single day. They're riding their little ripstick and uh, having a great time outside just getting out of the house because we're all cooped up or maybe you've joined a virtual class or maybe you found an accountability partner where you guys are FaceTiming and, and working out, whatever it might be. If you're getting active and moving, it's going to help with stress relief. I just did a Facebook Live this week with a, a licensed psychologist in our area and he was talking about the biggest thing that he's seeing to help people manage stress is exercise right now. So if you combine eating healthy with the exercise, you're really going to see the results long term and not have this quick fix and go back to your old habits later. So today I really want us to think about taking a self-assessment. Where are you at? What's the lowest hanging fruit that you can confidently tackle right now? We're going to talk about the three-step process to success and then I want you to really think about one actionable step that you can take to help you achieve long-term results. You know, long after this is all over, let's think about what healthy habits we've started over the past four weeks that we can continue to do when we go back to our old routines. And maybe it's not going to be exactly the way it was before, but hopefully we can figure out some healthy habits that we can continue to maintain 
long after this, this season of our life is over. So Ashley, let's talk about this assessment. Yeah, I think the biggest question we want to start off when we're asking ourselves is, what does success look like to you? Because everyone's different. You know, we always say no two people have the same nutrition plan. No two people are going to have the same uh, personal training plan. So we're not going to all have the same idea of what success looks like. So I think that's such a very important question to start off with and ask yourself, what, what does success look like to me? Absolutely. And I think success right now in this season could be different than what success looked like two months ago for you. Like really just giving yourself some grace right now with all these routines. You know, if you guys um, are parents, you're trying to homeschool kids, we're trying to balance work at home. Life is crazy right now and everything doesn't have to be perfect. But if you have some good routines that you've kept in place, it really does make it easier to help you find a new normal. Yeah. And you know, especially right now, your nutrition and your fitness might even be on the back burner. You know, things are changing as Nicole said, our routines are kind of crazy right now. So let's focus on the things that you can control. Your nutrition, you can control your sleep, you can control your stress management. You know, there are some things that you can definitely have control over. So let's focus on those and not the things that are going to overwhelm us because we really can't control them. Absolutely. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a plan. And after we are thinking about this assessment with what does success look like to you, I would also be thinking about what's worked well in the past for you. And that's always a question that we ask when we do initial assessments with clients. You know, what's worked well in the past that maybe you've fallen off of? So for instance, I'll give you an example. One of our clients, she was struggling with uh, nighttime eating. Like she was just sitting in front of the TV. I'm sure it's happened to all of us. We have a bowl of something and then all of a sudden, the bowl is gone and we've eaten the whole bowl and we're still in front of the TV. I see a lot of people smiling. You're like, yep, that, that definitely has been me. Um, you know, but I asked her, well, what worked well when you didn't do that in the past? She said, well, like I had a hot cup of tea that I drank, like decaffeinated tea. I'm like, well, could we just go back to having that decaffeinated tea and like satisfying yourself with drinking a little something instead of eating? Oh yeah, I could definitely do that. Like you don't need to reinvent the wheel with something completely different if you have something that worked well in the past. And on the opposite side of that, if you you are thinking what did not work well in the past, let's not go back down that road. Like let's avoid those things and move on and do something different. So really in the self-assessment, we want to think about what's worked well and what did it, and then we start creating our plan. So with this plan, we really want to look at you know, what is a six month goal? What is a one month goal? And then what do we need to actually do to help us achieve those goals? When we work with clients, typically right now, we're not doing in-body scans, um, but usually when um, people come into our facility, they do an in-body scan where we're measuring their body fat percentage, muscle mass. And we talk about like, what does your six month goal, what is long-term success? And then let's break that down. Realistic weight loss, if your goal is to try to lose weight, one to two pounds per week. You know, when you go to Publix, you'll see like lose 10 pounds in 10 days. Um, that's not realistic weight loss. You lose a lot of muscle and water weight when you cut out carbohydrates, which is what 99% of those diets are recommending. And then you will regain that weight as soon as you add those carbohydrates back in. So we want to look at what I see all the head shaking here, like, yep, yep, definitely. Uh, you know, so you want to look at, all right, what is short and long-term success. And when you think about your goals, the most important thing that you need to think about with your goal is why do you have that goal? So a lot of people, and it takes some digging sometimes with our clients, but they'll say, Nicole, I want to lose, I want to lose 20 pounds. I'm like, why, why do you want to lose 20 pounds? Well, that's going to get me back into those skinny jeans that I'm looking at every single day in my closet that I can't fit in right now. Okay. Why do you want to get into those skinny jeans? well, actually I feel more confident. I feel better in my own skin when I fit into those skinny jeans. Okay. That's your real why. That's why we have to think about this and have that. I want to feel confident. I want to feel better in my own skin on the forefront of our goals, because we all know that weight loss, if your goal is to lose weight or just to get healthy is not a straight line. Things will happen. Coronavirus pandemic will screw up all of your plans and get in the way. So we need to have the why to always go back to, to keep us on track when life throws us curveballs like we have right now. So when we think about these goals, the next thing we need to think about is like, what do we need to do today? 
And one of the things, one of my mentors, um, Michael Hyatt, asked me to start doing over a year ago when I joined the, the company uh, as a client. He said, you know, I want you to write down just three things each day. Like, those are your big three things. What do you want to accomplish each day? And if you set yourself up for the week with a plan, you're going to find yourself staying successful and sticking with that plan. But if you don't have a plan, it's going to be the frozen pizza that's in the freezer. And I can tell you that because my husband was coaching our virtual kids PE class and seven of the nine kids on Friday said that Thursday night they had frozen pizza for dinner, <laughs> which is a common thing going on right now because you know we run out of meal prep or we don't have time to, not maybe necessarily time, but we don't want to go to the grocery store. So we're getting you know, whatever is convenient. So if we can set ourselves up for success and really have a plan, we can prevent ourselves from falling off track, right? Yeah, and at Healthy Steps Nutrition, we really focus on a habit-based approach. I tell my clients all the time that habits are gonna be your foundation to help you be successful long-term with your goals. But what we need to do to make sure that we're doing those habits consistently is create ourselves an action step. Action steps are where we're gonna to use to create those habits, which are gonna be a foundation for success long-term. Absolutely. And those action steps might be as simple as eat two fifths of vegetables every day for lunch and dinner for the first week. And that might be what success looks like for you. You have an action, did I do this, yes or no? And you can reflect back, all right, what do I need to do to set myself up to have two fifths of vegetables that I am consuming first of every lunch and dinner, right? Yep. Keep it simple, guys. So we really want to look at those goals and understand the why and then break it down to what action you need to set every single day and track that. You know, with the HSN app, our clients track um, habits in there so they hit mark complete. And then there's a feedback loop with their nutrition coach every single Friday with, oh, did you do this? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Actually, you did. Awesome job. There's, you know, that accountability and support. If you don't have that, you're doing it yourself make a little chart or print out a calendar and then mark it off so that you can go back and look, did I actually do what I said I was going to do? You know, one of the things that, you know, tracking your progress is just such a big, big piece of the puzzle, right? It is. Cause you can't, if you don't track it, you can't measure your success. Absolutely. So when we are talking about healthy habits, the biggest thing I can preach to you is don't bite off more than you can chew. Like you do not need to change every possible thing that you've done over the past 40 to 50 to 30, however, many, however old you are, you don't need to change everything today. You just need to change one thing. And if you think about how many other things have been changed in your life, it's pretty overwhelming right now. So just focus on one thing at a time and layer it on to something that you might already do. For mm -hmm. instance, if we're talking about lunch, and we're trying to get in more vegetables, just start with the plate method. Have two fists of vegetables for lunch every single day. Um, for clients that struggle with getting water in, you're brushing your teeth every single morning, hopefully. Um, and if you're doing that, could you drink a cup of water right after you brush your teeth? Layering habits onto another habit is gonna help you be more successful. If you haven't read the book, Atomic Habits, that's one of my absolute favorite books. I have every single coach a nutrition coach read that book because it's such a great book that talks about habits and habit coaching and for you as a you know person trying to build new habits this gives you a really great idea of, of how to do that yeah absolutely and if we're talking to a client who's trying to really maybe get into the habit of meal prepping well ask them what day do you normally go grocery shopping well can you block off some time on your calendar after you go grocery shopping for an hour or two and meal prep to set yourself up for success and if they can They'll do that and they'll layer that onto the habit of already going grocery shopping. Absolutely. Planning the meal prep is, is huge. huge and portioning it out. I know I'm sure many of you have been in a scenario before where you've prepped things and not portioned it out and then all of a sudden you're throwing away your meal prep or like, what did I just do? So, you know, if you prep it and portion it out and really plan out your meals, it's going to help you not have food waste, which we don't want right now at all yeah. or ever, um, it, but stick with Stick with the plan. Yeah, and one last thing we like to talk about is try adding something instead of taking something away. We really try to uh, implement a sustainable, healthy lifestyle, not a restrictive diet. 
So um, instead of like trying to take away these things that you're doing, let's start with adding something in. Let's add two fistfuls of veggies to every lunch and dinner. Let's add some more water on top of the coffee you're drinking in the morning. Um, let's really try to start with that mindset because if we're in a restrictive mindset, it's not gonna make you so apt to be successful. Absolutely, it'll cause you to like want to have more of those things that you're telling yourself you can't have because you can't have it, right? Instead, focus on adding more vegetables. You're going to fill up your stomach and then you're not going to want as much of the other things. Same thing with pasta, right? Or pizza. My clients are like, can I have a, can I have pizza? If you want a piece of pizza, have a piece of pizza, but eat two cups of vegetables first. And I promise you're not going to have four pieces of pizza. You might have two and great. Have your pizza and then, and then move on. Right? Yeah. Let's be positive focus instead of a negative connotation of what we're doing. And you know, we always say, if you continue to point out and be positive, you're going to see more positive. Just Absolutely. like if you get a Jeep and you have a Jeep now, you're going to see so many Jeeps on the road when you're driving around. Or if you're thinking about buying a house and you really want a brick house, you'll start to see a lot more brick houses when you're in the neighborhood. Exactly. When you pay attention to something, you think about that, you're going to see more of it. So focusing on the positive will help carry that positive reaction for sure. So we have this plan, Ashley. Yes. Now we need to execute yeah. this plan. Step two, you got you to gotta execute. You, you have all this information. You've done your self-assessment. You understand how to create action steps, which are going to lead you to having these healthy habits to reach your goals. Now we got to do something with that. So let's talk about executing a plan. First and foremost, I want to talk about making sure that we block off time and we actually take time to make sure that we can use our steps and use our action and be successful. So I'm going to give you the idea with meal planning. So if I'm going to want to do meal planning as my new habit, as my new goal, I want to make sure that I have lunch and dinner prepped for the week so I don't go to that frozen pizza or that fast food, then I'm going to make sure that I designate time to actually go grocery shopping and I have time to do the meal prep. I'm going to make sure I set myself up to success to actually execute the plan that I worked so hard to get to. Absolutely. So let's start a little bit about uh, macronutrients. So when we talk about macronutrients, there are three ones that I'm going to discuss. We have protein, we have carbohydrates, and we have fat. So it's important to know a little bit about these because it's going to help you balance your meals and set yourself up for success. Protein is really important, guys, and it provides our body with structure, components of enzymes, it regulates your body function, helps support your immune system, and also keeps you fuller longer and keeps you more satisfied. Calories from protein should comprise about 30% of our daily caloric intake. And when we're looking at protein, we really want to choose lean sources most of the time. And when I'm talking about lean sources of protein, I'm talking about those that are going to have between zero to two grams per ounce of fat. So some examples are chicken breast, fish like tilapia or salmon. Um, also another great one is ground turkey or lean ground sirloin. We want to really limit the moderate to high types of fat sources because they do have a lot more fat to protein ratio, and then you're gonna have a lot more caloric value when you're talking about like a ribeye or a chicken wing. Um, so when you're looking at some tips, maybe trim the fat off if you have a fattier um, cut of meat, and also utilize different ways of preparing your protein, like grilling, baking, or air frying. We love the air fryer. If you have not used an air fryer before, it is absolutely awesome. If you have kids that don't love vegetables, air frying will make them nice and crispy and huge fans yes. of air fryers. <laughs> Next is carbs. So guys, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, like carbohydrates are bad for you. They, get, they really get the bad rap. But the truth is so many types of foods actually fall under the carbohydrate umbrella. Things such as sugar, fruit, pasta, vegetables, so many things. But carbohydrates are so important because it's your body's main source of fuel. It's what fuels your brain. And it also keeps protein from being used as energy. Um, carbs aid in the oxidation or the breakdown of fat. And when we're looking at carbohydrate consumption, we wanna make sure that we're not consuming more than 40% of your daily caloric intake of carbohydrates. So we're talking about carbs, some pro tips are consuming carbohydrates that are lower in sugar and higher in fiber. These are known as lower glycemic carbohydrates. And we're looking also at lower glycemic fruits as well too. 
When we're at the grocery store, and Nicole talked about this earlier, we want to make sure we're shopping the perimeter of the grocery store and looking at those minimally processed items. Also, making sure that we're loading up our plate at least half with non-starchy veggies. I always um, love when marketers market their carbohydrates, for instance, like Pop-Tarts, let's say. We all know probably Pop-Tarts aren't the best option, but it says like whole grains in big letters. So you think as like a parent, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm getting the best option and we've got whole grains. Then you look at the nutrition facts label and you've got eight to 12 grams of sugar in your Pop-Tart. And for you guys who have never looked at nutrition labels before or are not super well versed in them, for every four grams, it's one teaspoon of sugar. So if your yogurt or um, your Pop-Tart or cereal, for instance, says it's 16 grams of sugar per serving, that's four teaspoons of sugar. So a lot of times we wouldn't think like, man, I'm, I'm eating four teaspoons of sugar in one serving if you're actually having only one serving, which a lot of times we might have a little bit more. So think about that when you're looking at your nutrition facts and when you're looking at packaged foods. Yeah, absolutely. And you see a lot of these food products labeled recently with the keto diet trend of no to low carbs and keto friendly, but guys, really, you really want to shift away from that. We really want to focus on whole foods and not processed food products. The problem is when it says like sugar-free or keto or, or something like that, they're vegan even. <laughs> there's a lot of food products in there and, and your body does not understand how to break a lot of those things down and could cause inflammation, GI issues. Um, so looking at whole foods and using vegetables as your source of carbohydrate, fruit as your source of carb carbohydrates that are low glycemic would be the best option for sure. All right, and fat. So contrary to popular belief, fat does not make you fat. Um, it's actually extremely important. It helps with the digestion of fat-soluble vitamins. It's a big component for our cell membranes. It also helps with um, being used as a source of energy. And when we consume fat in a balanced meal, it's going to help us be fuller longer. It sustains the fullness in your belly. It slows down digestion. But fat is going to be more calorically dense than our other two macronutrients. Fat actually is nine grams versus four when we're talking about carbs or protein. So a little bit goes a long way when we're talking about fat. And when we're talking about how much fat we, be, we should be consuming for our daily intake, it should be about 30%. So some pro tips that we talk about when we're looking at fat, make sure that we're choosing a healthy fat, a plant-based fat source. So instead of looking at higher fat protein sources like ribeye or um, something like that. Look at a lower fat protein source like a chicken breast and pair that with a healthy plant-based fat like avocado or olive oil. Um, some other awesome sources of healthy plant-based fats are nuts, nut butter, and coconut. Um, also make sure we're consuming fat in moderation because it's so calorically dense. So measuring out that teaspoon of olive oil, not just dumping it on your salad, is going to be a smart move. Also, too, you want to limit fried and processed foods because trans fats are not very good for you. We want to make sure we steer away from consuming trans fat. Absolutely. All right. So I talked about the plate method. So why is it important that I just talk to you guys about those macronutrients? Because I want you to be able to build a plate, a balanced meal, and it's the, really the plate method is the simplest and the most effective way to increase your diet of whole foods and balancing your meals and help you achieve success when it comes to your nutrition. And you really don't need to do anything except for have a plate and understand how to build that plate. So when we're looking at the plate method for lunch, we're gonna to wanna to really load up half of that plate with our non-starchy veggies. So things like broccoli, things like cauliflower, spinach, zucchini, asparagus, peppers, cabbage, those are gonna be your non-starchy veggies. So load up on those. Then we're gonna look at our carbohydrates. So for lunch, we're gonna have a quarter of our plate healthy carbohydrates, non-processed forms of carbohydrates. So things like squash, sweet potato, regular potato, beans, brown rice, quinoa, things like that. So quarter of our plate is gonna have those healthy starches, those complex carbohydrates. And finally, we're gonna do a quarter of our plate with our lean protein sources. Things like lean ground beef, chicken breast, turkey, shrimp, or fish. Finally, we're gonna to wanna to add in our healthy plant-based source of fat. And you see that's at the side of the plate because 
this amount of fat that we're going to add into our plate is going to be determined by how much fat we're getting from our protein or our meat source. And for dinner, so dinner looks a little different than lunch. The only difference with dinner is that we're going to do three quarters of our plate non-starchy veggies, one quarter of our plate lean protein, and then add in that healthy plant-based fat. So a little bit less carbohydrates when it comes to dinner to balance out our day. And also you guys have to think, you know, usually when we talk about lunch and dinner with our clients um, that are coming in for classes and doing a little bit more activity, they might have something like the plate method for lunch and dinner. Right now we're just not as active as we were before. And even if we are participating in um, Zoom classes or virtual classes, which I think I've hit a PR for workouts <laughs> just because that Zoom class has become part of my 5.30 day every single day. Um, you're just not pushing yourself as hard as you would in a CrossFit class. We just don't need as many carbohydrates in our, um, in our day now that we're not as active. Yeah. Okay, my favorite. So now setting ourselves up for success, executing the plan. We went shopping. We got all of our stuff for meal prep. We understand how to balance our meals. So what are my tools of the trade to get this meal prep going to help me achieve this action step to enforce my habit to meet my goals? Well, some of our favorite tools for meal prepping are the crock pot or the slow cooker. I love it. You can just throw some protein in there. One of my favorite recipes is the pulled chicken. Set it and forget it. Do it in the morning, come back later, and then shred that up, and you have a lot of great healthy protein to use for the week. We also love the muffin tins. I mean, you know, not just for regular muffins, like our blueberry protein muffins, but also for meatloaf muffins. Which I know we're making today on the coin cooking show at 4.30. Those are our kid favorites. For Absolutely. sure. Love those. Great to portion. The air fryer. I mean, Nicole was just talking about that earlier. It gives such great crunchy texture. We can do the buffalo cauliflower in there. You can do proteins. You can do anything in that air fryer. I've even seen people using it to bake stuff, like bake desserts and things. It's so cool. So interesting. Um, also, we love um, the baking sheet or a roasting pan. One of our favorite dishes to do as a side is roasted broccoli every day. It's so good. And you can just throw that in a little bit of olive oil and seasoning and throw that in a baking sheet or a roasting pan in your oven. And you've got like a nice crunchy, awesome texture on your broccoli. And it also is really great reheated. And then lastly, but definitely not least is our three compartment containers. So when we're setting ourselves up for success and meal prepping, as Nicole was mentioning earlier, you want to make sure that we're pre-portioning our stuff. So much easier to grab a pre-portioned container than having to open five or six different ones and put it out into a plate and reheat it. So we love these three compartment containers. You can buy them on Amazon. They've got exactly what we need for our plate method, that big portion for your non-starchy veggies, and the two-quarter portions for your protein and for your carbs. Absolutely. So I love this slide because this is actually what I did last Sunday. <laughs> Um, when I'm meal prepping, I want to make it easy for me. I want to make it so I'm not eating the same thing every single day too, right? I, I get bored of stuff. I, I don't want to eat pulled chicken tacos every single day of the week. So I just love this as a visual because this is what I did last weekend. I made the pulled chicken in the crock pot. And then I used that pulled chicken to do five different recipes for myself for throughout the week. I used it in a white bean chili. I set myself up for some pulled chicken tacos. I made a chicken kale salad. I also stuffed it into some sweet potatoes I had cooked for some stuffed sweet potatoes. And later on, I added some guacamole on top. It's really good. And finally, I made a chicken avocado salad to put into lettuce wraps for later on in the week. So yes, I made one thing, but I could use that one thing and set myself up for success five different ways. So it doesn't have to be boring. You don't have to eat the same thing over and over again. It's just getting creative and setting yourself up a plan. And guys, every single recipe I just told you about on this slide are all on HealthySepsNutrition.com. All right. I love this, Nicole. I don't know about you. This is absolutely one of my favorite things to do. And I actually have our kids get involved with us when we're planning and prepping so that there's a little bit more buy-in. We'll go to the website and look up like what are the things that you guys want to have to eat this week. And a lot of times it happens during the cooking show that we've been doing on Facebook Live. Cooper will drop in a little hint of what she wants to cook the next week, which will mean that's what we're eating. Um, but having a way that you can plan out all of your meals so that you're not having to scramble after a long day or 
trying to manage that between homeschooling and everything else that you're doing. You know, Ashley, you made a really good point with it doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't have to eat the same thing every single day. You don't have to spend 10 hours in the kitchen, you know, trying to have things be cooked at the same time, like using the meatloaf muffins and cold chicken, cooking those at the same time means you don't have to have two different crock pots and uh, wait for one thing to cook before the next thing starts. So planning it out, going to the website, the Healthy Steps Nutrition website is what we personally do. I'm sure you probably do something similar to plan out, okay, what are our proteins? That's what we always start with. What is the protein that we're going to have? Because roasted broccoli is pretty quick to make. So we usually make that the night of. And then our starch is pretty simple. It's in the freezer. Usually we're popping in sweet potato toast or heating up some rice or um, you know, cooking some taco shells because tacos are, are a big thing here. Um, <laughs> but, you know, keeping it super simple and planning it out, I always I definitely always start with the protein. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a great tool to use because after you plan out your week of meals, you can just take this piece of paper and go to the grocery store and go grocery shopping. You already have your list. And like Nicole said, having the kids and the family members also participate is so awesome because then you get buy-in from them. And they'll be more likely to jump in the kitchen and help you cook when they had a hand and tell you what they want. Absolutely. So we first created the plan. Then yep. we took some action. We executed it. Yeah. Now we need to do step three and that's track the progress. And this is such an important piece of the puzzle because success leads to motivation. And if you can see those little wins, it's going to keep you motivated and going back to the why of your goals. So tracking your progress you know, when we were looking up statistics, when we did a presentation for gym owners um, in January, we were looking up statistics with um, New Year's resolutions. And it was like 80% of people made New Year's resolutions. And I don't remember the exact statistics, but I'm pretty sure it was close to 70% failed by the second week of February. And when we looked at why, it was because they didn't track their progress and they set unrealistic goals, Yep. right? And then the third one was they didn't have anyone following up with them. Yeah, so no essentially all three steps here to make sure that you are not one of those statistics. Um, but the point is you really need to track your progress. And this doesn't have to be fancy. I'm not telling you that you need to track every single food that you eat in MyFitnessPal. That doesn't have to be the case. In fact, most of our clients don't track their food in MyFitnessPal because it's just an added thing that they have to do every single day. But creating a calendar. If you're, you, if you're one of our clients, you have the HSN app where we create custom habits and you mark complete and tell us yes, so that we have some feedback for you, but you have to track your progress. One of the tools that we love, I love is this um, Active Days, and this is SugarWatt. It's a free app that you can download if you're looking for um, tracking your active days. So I set a goal for myself a year, a little over a year ago with tracking the active days and I went 16 times a month. Well, you can bet um, that there have been months where the last six days I've had to work out every single day because I did, wasn't going to hit my 16 times per month. The point is, is if you track and you constantly can go back and be able to look at how your progress is towards your goal each month, you're going to be more likely to stick with it. It's if we don't have a way to track our progress, that that goal just seems out of reach or we just kind of forget about it because life gets busy. But even if you have something like this and you can't go to the gym, you can still track your progress towards your goal, even if your routine has changed and you're having to work out of your garage or living room, not the gym. Yeah. And, you know, there are so many different tools you can use to track your progress. When it comes to meal planning, you can use your calendar. So say I'm blocking off the time after I go grocery shopping every Sunday to meal prep. Every time I do that, I can just check it off on my calendar and I can see how many weeks I've done in a row with my meal prepping. And that's success to me. Right? You can also use other things like the notes function in your computer and your phone. You could also just use sticky notes you know, in your office, putting that in view so you can see when you're reaching your goals. So just making sure that we are able to track it because again, success leads to motivation. And if we don't have a way to track, we can't tell if we're successful. Absolutely. No, doing something like MyFitnessPal, if you've never tracked your food before, just to kind of see could be a great way to just get like an idea of where are you at compared to where you think you're at, mm -hmm. or just measuring out your food. A lot of times when I have new clients, they tell me, oh, I have about, you know, a cup and then they measure it out. They're like, oh, actually my cup was actually two and a half cups. And it's not exactly the same portion that I originally thought. So do yourself a little check to see 
-hmm. how much is a portion and then once you see that now you can replicate it without the measuring cups yeah and just like we said earlier how success looks different to everybody tracking is going to look different to everybody too um i'll give you an example of my husband he uses a daily planner to track so in the morning he'll write one thing that he was thankful for the day before then he'll write out what he had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and his snacks, and what he needs to do today, like what goals he needs to achieve. And that's his way of tracking. So just find out what works well for you, what makes sense for you. Absolutely. I think the most important thing with that is being consistent with it. Like you can't do it for one day and think you're going to have success overnight. Like we live in this microwave society where we think like, I want to achieve this. It needed to happen yesterday. And everything takes so much time. If you think about weight loss, your weight didn't come on in a day. And it's definitely not going to come off in a day. And we want to build those healthy, healthy habits so you can maintain you're working really hard to lose. Yeah. Right. Frequently asked questions. This is always our, our favorite part. And then go ahead and type in your questions in the chat so that we can answer all of those. But where do I find healthy recipes? Um, we have a ton of healthy recipes on healthysepsnutrition.com. Definitely check those out if you've never checked them out before. Uh, Ashley, where else do you go to get healthy recipes besides our website? You know, sometimes like I'll, I'll play around on Pinterest. Uh, I'll type something in. Maybe I have something in my fridge. I'm not sure what to make and I need inspiration. I'll type something in on Pinterest. Um, also, I've, I've been telling a lot of my clients who are looking for more plant-based type meals. I really love Forks Over Knives. They have a great archive of vegetarian, vegan options too. But really, anything can give you inspiration. Instagram, Facebook, I mean... When, again, when it comes to healthy eating, it should be something that's enjoyable and you can still have your favorite foods. Um, it shouldn't be restrictive. So using the plate method, keeping our tips in mind, um, you can definitely make healthy recipes out of your grandma's recipe if you wanted to. Absolutely, definitely. You know, some simple tricks like using Greek yogurt to um, make things a little bit creamy instead of cream. There's simple things that you can do. If you love a pasta dish, add in some vegetables to that or try using spaghetti squash or zucchini noodles instead of just pasta. I absolutely love spaghetti squash. That's one of the staples in our house. You haven't tried that. And I think a lot of times for clients, it's just overwhelming to think like, oh, I need to try something new. I don't want to waste the time and have it not taste good. Like our recipes taste really good. Like don't reinvent the wheel here. Use stuff that works to get really comfortable and familiar with trying new things and then go from there, right? All right, this is a question I get a lot. Can I eat a sandwich? Again, guys, we're all about having a healthy lifestyle, not a restrictive diet. So if you really love sandwiches, have a sandwich, but just think, how can I make it healthier? Maybe you're gonna go for a sandwich thin instead of regular bread. Um, making sure too, we're getting enough protein on that sandwich because a lot of times sandwiches are very carbohydrate heavy and not enough protein. So making sure we're getting enough protein and then loading it up with the veggies afterwards, whether we're putting it on the sandwich or having it on the side, making sure we're loading it up and keeping that meal balanced. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I always do is, it, especially when we're having burgers, we'll do half the bun and mm -hmm. just put the lettuce on top. Super simple. All right, next question. Do I need to weigh my food? No, you do not need to weigh your food to be successful. I do think measuring out the carbohydrates so you know how much carbs are you're consuming is, is a good thing, but load up on those vegetables, have as much as you want. If you're using the plate method or using your hand is a really good way to not have to bust out a scale if you don't wanna do that. You know, two fists of vegetables, about a palm or a little bit bigger of your protein and a little bit less than a fist for your carbs. That's a really great way to kind of use something that you always have with you, hopefully your hand, yeah. um, to stay on track. Yeah, absolutely. Do not need to weigh your food. Um, I would say 99% of our clients do not need to weigh their food. <laughs> oh, good one. Do I have to eat the starchy carbs? Aren't carbs bad for you? No, as we talked about before, carbs are not bad for you. We do want to have some healthy carbs in our diet, guys. We want to fuel our brain, fuel our bodies. Honestly, the key is balancing your meals. You're going to be sustained and fuller longer if you're balancing your meals. And a part of the balanced meals is having those healthy carbs, those complex carbohydrates. So don't be afraid of carbs. Carbs are your friends. Absolutely. Can I have any snack bars? Um, there are definitely some different snack bars that we love. Um, RX bars are a really good one. But when you look at a bar, a snack bar, you want to actually look at the ingredients label and the nutrition facts on the back. Um, just because it might have four ingredients or super healthy, it doesn't mean it's really balanced. For instance, lawyer bars, although they don't have a ton of ingredients in them, they're very carbohydrate heavy, not a ton of protein. 
um, in there. So you want to have a balance, even though it's marketed as very healthy, you want to make sure that you're having a balance because if you're just having carbohydrates, it's going to break down pretty quickly and you're going to be hungry faster. And I don't know about you guys, but I do not like to be hungry. I'm not the nicest person when I'm hungry. So you want to stay full and satisfied if you're eating healthy and having a balanced bar like an RX bar is one of our favorites. The perfect kids bars are pretty good too. Those are pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. um, there's a local company called FroPro Pro that has some pretty good bars as well, but keep it simple. Um, check the ingredients and the nutrition facts on the back for sure. All right. So if you are thinking all oh, this is great and you're like, this sounds like everything I've heard before, but I haven't taken action or you're feeling like overwhelmed, we are here to help. Uh, we have individual coaching. We're actually launching a nutrition challenge um, in just two weeks, which is gonna be so much fun. Ashley, we actually just taped 36 pieces of new content this week um, with a videographer talking all about finding a new normal, healthy habit, stress management, alcohol intake, like every single question that we've gotten asked over the past four weeks, we made videos and it's coming out in the nutrition challenge that we're launching May 4th, right? Yeah, guys, it's going to be really awesome. If you are definitely struggling, you want extra support, you know, that's what nutrition coaches are here for. They're the support and accountability experts. They're the ones who are going to keep you on track for your goals. So if that sounds like something that you could benefit from, we are here to help. We'd love to have you. Absolutely. It looks like someone went drawing on our, on our presentation. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, the nuts and bolts of this 28 day challenge it is starting May 4th to May 31st. Uh, cool thing is we, our HQ location could possibly be open in that time, which means we will be able to have virtual classes congruently with the in-person classes. But no matter what, we've continued to add nutrition clients and help people with nutrition because it's all done virtually at this point. You meet with a nutrition coach just like we're meeting today where it's not just us talking, it's you and the nutrition coach talking, um, but you have access to the app where you have weekly videos, nutrition tips, meal ideas, and most importantly, someone to keep you accountable, yeah. right? So two different options we have for the nutrition challenge. If you guys are interested, there's a nutrition only option and there's a nutrition and fitness option. Personally, the fitness component has been the virtual classes. If you guys are with a gym that offers virtual classes or you don't have that available, we do community classes every single Saturday, virtual classes. And I would highly recommend that you join for free just to give it a shot. It's honestly the bright spot, like the highlight of my day every single day. It's so much fun. Uh, you talk to people, you push yourself harder because you have someone watching you. And it's kind of like a horse race. Like the coach is like, all right, this person's doing this, this person's doing this. And you, you have that accountability and support and it's a clickable link, which is my favorite. You don't have to drive anywhere. You just click your little mouse to join the class. Yeah. It's really fun. I mean, I, I join in and I have my son crawling all over me as I'm doing the workouts. <laughs> He's trying to do jumping jacks. It's, it's a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is the end of our presentation, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and unshare our screen and the question. Yeah. Let's get to the questions. This is my favorite part. All right, so let's go back here. I think down a little bit. Let's yeah. see. Oh, up a little bit. Right there. All right. Um, let's see this one. How to cheat the wish to bite them. Yeah, okay, how do you really control yourself and not bite off more than you can chew? I think being regimented with just setting one habit per week and keeping yourself consistent with that. And once you nail that one thing, add something else to the plate. It's so easy, especially going back to like we live in this microwave society with everyone wanting everything really quickly. And you could be so easily tempted to change everything at one time. But when we look at success long term, the research shows if you change one habit at a time, you're over 80% successful to maintain that habit for a year but you change two or more things at one time, it's less than 15% successful. In three or more time, three or more habits at one time, it's less than 3% success after one year. So just knowing and like staying regimented with, hey, I'm just gonna do this one thing. And once I nail that, then I'll add the next thing to my plate will, will definitely help you. 
Flower asked, what's the name of the book um, that I was talking about? And it's Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, I am a huge fan of Audible. If you guys are not fans of Audible or you've never tried Audible, it is awesome. You can listen to the book. Um, you don't have to actually read it, which is great. And yeah, James Clear, Audible. Someone says they've been on a nutrition program with their gym for three months, but haven't seen any results on the scale. Well, I'm going to tell you when you're on a program for weight loss as your um, goal, a lot of times we don't see the scale move right away. It's measurements that are going to decrease. There's a lot of physiological changes and it's going, this is different for everyone. There's a lot of physiological changes that are going to happen when you start changing the way you eat and you start dialing in your diet for weight loss. So be patient, let those changes happen. And I promise if you can stay consistent, you will see success and results. Absolutely. I think that's an important piece of the puzzle. You have to look at other things, especially right now if you're a nutrition client and you aren't able to go in and do an in-body scan. Some of the things that we're having our clients do is try on their skinny jeans every single week and see how they're feeling different, right? Mm -hmm. Take progress pictures so that you can see your body changing. A lot of times we don't see um, you know, the changes in the scale every, or not even necessarily the scale, but when we look in the mirror, we don't necessarily see the changes. But if you were to look a month from now, if you were to can stay to stay consistent, you're gonna see those changes. Um, what are some low glycemic index fruits? Okay, so some of our favorites, we love berries. So think of like blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries are some of my favorites. And also because they can be frozen easily and I love throwing those in like for my oatmeal or smoothies. Um, some other things you can think about are apples, oranges, peaches, nectarines. There's a ton. Absolutely. Um, what should I have as a snack before my workout? So work before your workouts, you want to make sure that you're having a little bit of carbs and protein before your workouts. Um, having fat slows down digestion is not necessarily the best thing to have before your workout. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll have um, little applesauce packets or mix applesauce with a little bit of um, protein powder or doing like a half of a protein shake. Liquids are faster digested than solid food. So if you're the type of person that's like, I feel nauseous if I eat something before I work out, try a little bit of liquids because that's going to be better digested. Another thing you might try is like Greek yogurt before your workout. And then someone asked what was the name of the app that Nicole was talking about that she tracks her workouts in. That's Sugar Wad. Yeah, Sugar Wad. Um, sugar alcohols. So everyone responds to sugar alcohols a little bit differently for sure. Um, when you see like sugar free or low sugar, likely they're adding a sugar alcohol in there because they're trying to find something sweet. There are substitutions that are um, like plant based, like monk fruit is one or stevia. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with sugar is that, or any type of sweetener, is like you get the sweet, you want more sweet. So whether it's a fake sugar, a real sugar, maple syrup, agave, no matter what we're talking about, your body reacts to the sweetness and you want more. The more sweet we want, have, the more we want it. So diet sodas, all these things, you're going to keep wanting more. One of my favorite tips when it comes to looking at things to do to sweeten without sugar, sugar alcohols, whatever it might be, is look at maybe trying some other options. So cinnamon, for example. Cinnamon hits the same taste buds as sweet does in your mouth. So when you add a little bit of cinnamon to our coffee or our oatmeal, you're going to get fooled that it's sweeter because you're going to think you're tasting sweet, but it's really cinnamon. Absolutely. Any other questions that you guys have for us? I see Alexa on here. She is one of our nutrition coaches at Healthy Subs Nutrition. Hi, Alexa. Alexa, you want to say hi? She's a rock star. Hi. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Trying to see any other familiar faces. Uh, well, I hope this was definitely able to help you. Again, you know, all of this information is great, but it's not going to work unless you take action. And if you have struggled in the past with accountability and support, or you struggled with not being able to follow through, we can definitely help you. The nutrition challenge is going to be so much fun. We're going to have people from literally around the world that have already signed up for yeah. this. And it's just going to be a great way to have that accountability and support be paired up with a nutrition coach to, to help you. So any other questions that you guys are is fasting good for losing weight? Yeah, that's a great question. So intermittent fasting, there's definitely some research that says it could be beneficial. Uh, there's also 
you have to look at what works well for you. If you're a person that really struggles with binge eating at night and you can have a cutoff and you are going to stick with that cutoff, awesome. Um, what I don't want to see with people that do intermittent fasting is just use that window to eat all the crap food that they can consume in a window. Like we still want to look at quality food first over just eating within a window. Um, yes, people have had results with that. Not something necessarily that we push clients to do or have our clients do at HSN. Um, just cause we focus really on, on healthy habits instead of something that's a little bit more restrictive. But if you're the type of person that needs some boundaries and you can eat quality food during a window, that could be a way to help you get on a right on the right track. Yeah, and I think that's a, a big theory or a big um, kind of trend with a lot of these diets recently, right? You know, keto, intermittent fasting, counting macros. Um, they're not going to work for you in the sense that you're going to get healthy habits. What happens is you lose weight because you're restricting yourself. But when it comes down to it, what you're really doing yourself a disservice is eating these unquality foods, these foods that aren't going to be what your body needs to sustain. Um, you really need to look at the big picture when it comes to these types of things. Yeah, you might lose weight. Yeah, you might see results. But long term, you need to have that healthy habit foundation. Without the foundation of the healthy habits, it's not going to be a sustainable lifestyle. It's a quick fix that you're going to go back into your old routine and your old habits. A question that didn't get asked that I always get asked when I do nutrition seminars with CrossFit gyms is, uh, when's my cheat day, right? Like you, the, all this sounds great, but when is my cheat day? Um, I do not recommend having an entire cheat day because you can really go off in one bad day, turns into a bad weekend, turns into a bad month, and then we're down this vicious rabbit hole. So if you're thinking about wanting something, have it and then move on. Like let's not completely restrict ourselves where it's this negative connotation of, I can't have this cheat. And if I do have it now, I feel super guilty about having it, have a little something and then move on. If you're the type of person that likes something like a little treat, like Amanda is one of our nutrition clients. And we've talked about having different types of treats. Yasso bars are a really great option. That's a Greek yogurt bar that isn't a ton of sugar and junk in there is, is pretty good. So set yourself up for success and don't have that all or nothing mindset because you're going to get yourself down a rabbit hole. If you want something, have a little bit and then move on. One of our mentors, Emily, actually, she wrote a blog about this and I love it. She says, I'm a nutrition coach, but I'm addicted to sugar. But what, what was her solution? She allows herself to have one Ghirardelli individually wrapped chocolate piece a day because she knows after lunch or after dinner, she's going to say, mm, I want something sweet. So she allows herself to have the one and moves on because she has a sweet tooth and that's what works for her. That would not work for me because I could not stop at one. So <laughs> setting myself up with success with the Yasso bar in the freezer is my solution. So again, there's no new nutrition program that's going to be best for everyone. You have to figure out what works well for you and what you can stick with. Yeah. Um, dates. I love dates. Yes. <laughs> dates work well for the sweet tooth. Um, a really good one is if you stuff them with a little bit of peanut butter and nut butter and sprinkle hemp on top. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. There you go. <laughs> um, what supplements do you recommend besides a multivitamin? So one of the supplements we recommend is omega-3s because it helps fight inflammation. When you look at omega-3 supplements, you want to look for something that on the back label says DHA and EPA. Those are the two main um, supplements. You don't want an omega supplement that's like all of them because omega-3s are what really help you fight inflammation. So looking for one that's mostly DHA and EPA is going to be what you want to focus on. Um, if it says like 369, that's not necessarily what you want, although we are in a society where we think if more is better. In this case, it, more is not better. We just want to focus on omega-3s. Really, if you're having a balanced diet of different colors, vegetables, and, and fruits. That means different vitamins and minerals. You're eating quality foods. You don't necessarily need to go crazy with a ton of supplements, um, but having uh, omega-3 supplement is something that I would recommend for sure. Yeah. Any other questions that you guys have for us? No? Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining. This was so fun to to chat with you guys. I see some familiar faces and some not. Again, if you have any questions for us or you're interested in joining um, the challenge, I'm going to put the link in the chat for you guys. And I'll also put the link for healthy recipes as well. So healthy recipes. 
there. And the nutrition challenge is in the chat as well. Awesome. Hope this was helpful, guys. Um, we're here if you need any additional help and support. Feel free to reach out. And we hope to see you guys in the challenge. Yeah. Bye, guys.